and he painted his house every July. <laughs> he afforded his kids so many opportunities. Travel, music and dance lessons, sports team participation in college, and he was very proud of our grandchildren. Uh, he enjoyed golfing, watching sports, traveling, reading, finance, symphonic music, and the theater. And he loved us and the kids. We were his life. We will miss your dad. And then she also added this note from March Towner, uh, her cousin. Uh, he was a wonderful friend to the Towner family branch. Careful, thoughtful, patient, and wise. What a beautiful tribute to Pat. We're going to listen now as David comes forward, and he's going to also share some thoughts with us. I want to thank everybody for coming today. I know he had a lot of friends at Park Place, and you know this just tells the whole story. Um, as I was writing this, I could never get through the whole thing as many times as I wrote it and rewrote it, so bear with me. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. So, I'm here to tell you who that quiet guy, Ken Lobauer, was. <laughs> Dad was one of the good guys. He was a great brother, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. He was a family man. He was an inventor. He had earned 17 patents while working at Caterpillar. He was a Bears fan, an Illinois fan, and also an avid bridge player. He was proud of his children and his grandchildren's accomplishments. He kept track of their growth through the years. He was a veteran, having served three and a half years in the U.S. Navy as a commissioned officer. I think this was the only time he wasn't there for me in my life. He took leave to be with mom the week I was due to be born, but I didn't cooperate, which was <laughs> the first of many times. <laughs> and after he had to return back to base, I arrived. The good thing mom's OB was my grandpa. <laughs> so she wasn't alone. As kids, he raised us the right way. We worked hard to accomplish our goals. During breaks in college, he made me work ahead <laughs> on my calculus studies. <laughs> and of course, he could teach it so he could check what I was doing. <laughs> he helped pave the way for me to get a co-op position at Caterpillar while in college. But at the same time, he had me use the money to pay my tuition. He was smart like that. He's always playing the long game. <laughs> he was a dedicated employee to Caterpillar with 40 years of service. I remember him working at night at his desk after dinner a lot, but he always found time to be with us and help others when needed as well. We grew up in a modest two-bedroom, one-bath, one-car garage house in Joliet, and he owned only one car for many years. He was a skilled handyman who did his own remodeling remodeling the second floor, adding two bedrooms and a bathroom for my sister and I, and then also remodeled his basement. Never understood how he ever found the time to do that, but he got it done. Always did his own home maintenance. I once caught him on the roof when he was in his 70s, replacing <laughs> the siding on his house. <coughs> And he would do all types of maintenance at Marsha's house as well. And they would tell me about it and they would laugh and I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he taught me all I know about the trades, tools, and life in general. When he moved to Japan for four years, 
I thought that was the most unliking, unlikely and surprising move for mom and dad. Never, never could believe it. I visited several times on my work and non-work related trips and they seemed to adapt very well. He learned the language, he bought a car, and he loved the food. Some things I wouldn't touch. <laughs> when they moved back to Shorewood, just back from Japan, he bought a John Deere tractor to continue to do his own yard work. I thought that was pretty sacrilegious. <laughs> but when he was away, both Anthony and I had a lot of fun driving it. <laughs> After mom died, I was worried about him being alone. He helped build Kathy in our house when we general contracted it. He worked with me every weekend, even when he was still working. We ran things, we put in the central vac system, we ran, the, we stained all the trim, we painted, we ran the phone lines, we ran the cable lines, anything that we could do ourselves just to keep him busy. He showed up every weekend. After that, we built the deck in that summer in 100 degree heat. Anthony helped and once fell off one of the joists and whacked him on the head with a saw. <laughs> but Dad laughed it off in typical fashion and went back to work. We played golf every weekend after that. We used to go to Arizona on golf trips for a week in the winter. Then, Dad met Marsha, and all that changed. <laughs> Suddenly, he was busy all the time. <laughs> Dad and Marsha loved to travel, but were very frugal. They lived in rented apartments and cooked their own meals. We thought they were crazy at the time. <laughs> but they were ahead of their time with the likes of Verbo and Airbnb today. You could talk to them about any subject. And he would have an opinion or offer his advice on current events, finances, sports, politics, and life in general. The last conversation we had was a Sunday, two days before he died. We talked for three hours. He was mad because I showed up at 12.30 and thought we were missing the Bears game. <laughs> Where have you been, he said. I told him that it didn't start until 3.30, so he comes out. <laughs> So I think after the disappointing opening day losses by both Illinois and the Bears that weekend, he decided that he'd had enough. <laughs> and just couldn't go through another down season. And that was the last time we spoke. Thanks for listening. to you this, this morning about Ken. Um, sometimes we have special people that come into our life that uh, have a unique personality like no one else's. And, you know, God made each of us different. They say that each of us has a twin someplace in the world, somebody that looks like us. Sometimes people say, oh, I saw somebody and I thought it was your dad or I thought it was him and, and it's not. But you know, whatever our outward appearance, we're all different. Uh, and God has given to each of us a special place in this world. And so when I think of Ken and I think of uh, the uniqueness that he had, I think of what his pastor friend who's known him since 1955 said, three words about him. And she said, he's quiet, he is steadfast, and he, is, he has wisdom. That's the three words she used. And when you have known him and met him and talked to him and those of us here at Park Place in different ways, I know how he played bridge with many of you, um, you know that he was a quiet guy. He wasn't a guy that was right out in front. 
uh, trying to get the limelight. He was a very humble person. And I think of the fruits of the Spirit that we read earlier, and I think of how much they describe him. Because it talks about love there, and we know of his love for you as family, and the love he had for us here at Park Place and for his friends, but also the joy that he brought to us and the joy that he had in life. And then he was a man of peace and patience. You can't say that about everyone. He was kind and good, and he had self-control, as we just heard of all the things that he did, but how he was so loyal, he was so steadfast, as his friend said, because 40 years at the same place, working faithfully and loyally, going all the way to Japan, going to the other part of the world. He was a man who had gentleness, as one of the fruits of the Spirit says. So I think each of us, in our own way, have had some interaction with him, and we've seen these wonderful characteristics, and that he had chosen to act this way with the gifts and the talents and the abilities that he had. Uh, when you, you think about all these things and you realize how each of us has a different place in the world, we're going to miss him a lot. We're going to miss the way in which he was a, a person who was easy to talk to, had so many different interests. When I would visit him in our health care, we had wonderful conversations together. But then the time comes when our life is over, and the wonderful thing in the Bible is that God not only gives us life, we see this little baby in the front row here, and we see how precious life is, and how it's such a gift from God, and no one else in all the world could create what God creates. It's a little child, and it grows, and then it learns, and then it gets older. But you know what? We also thank God for his gift of eternal life. And we know we can't earn that. We know that it's a gift from God. The Bible says, by grace you have been saved. Through faith, not of yourself. You didn't earn it. It's a gift that God gives to us. It's a precious gift. It's the gift to know that after death there is eternal life with God. There's no more struggles there. There's no more pain. There's no more tears, the Bible says. But all is peace forevermore. So we celebrate his life, and we celebrate that wonderful gift of eternal life that God has for each of us who trust in him. You know, they've said this phrase, and I think it's so true. They say, you won't remember everything that somebody said to you, but you will always remember how they made you feel. And when you were with Ken, you felt loved. And when you were with Ken, you felt like you were encouraged by him. You won't remember everything he said, but you can remember how he made you feel. Let's bow in prayer together. Lord, thank you for Ken's special life in this world, one of a kind. Thank you for his place in his family, and thank you for the memories we can share through these pictures and through talking together today. But thank you that you give us also that gift that gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for your blessings, and we praise you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's listen now as Morgan plays Someone to Watch Over Me. <coughs>
We're going to give you a chance to share a memory if you have one or a thought about Ken. So I'm going to come around with the microphone and if you would stand if you can, or you don't have to, but if you stand, then we can hear you better. And um, so I'll go among you, raise your hand if you'd like to say something. Uh, hi, I'm Ron, and Ken was my father-in-law. And uh, I, I too experienced his uh, generosity. He helped uh, helped us with the kids' education to turn them into these incredibly talented performers. <laughs> he helped me uh, work on my house. I remember one time we had the ceiling ripped open and, and the floor all taken out in the bathroom in our first house, and. He says, go make sure that thing's level. And I did something stupid, and the level fell through a hole in the floor all the way to the basement. <laughs> it's all bent, and it's no longer a precision instrument. He says, well, that's the one I was going to give to you. It's my big surprise. <laughs> his generosity was incredible. But also his, uh, as everyone said, his, his sense of etiquette and propriety. And I, I noticed not too many people had time beforehand to look at the uh, easel. You won't even believe this one. <laughs> In 1951, Ken was making his way down the, the road in Elgin, Illinois, and the mayor and the town councilman followed him for a couple blocks and said, that's the guy. And they gave him five dollars for being courteous. <laughs> <laughs> he won the, the courtesy prize. <laughs> but I would also uh, liken him to the, um, the character Heisenberg in Breaking Bad, the murderous <laughs> drug lord. <laughs> Because uh, late in the show, in, in the later seasons, the writers wanted us to understand what motivated this guy to scoop in literal pallet loads of $100 bills and never stop, even though he seemed to have more money than he'd ever spent. And he said, a man provides. And I really think maybe that was Ken's motto. He did everything in the world to see to the success of the next generation. Thank you, Ken. Anybody else? I'm Dave Bolton. I didn't know Ken very well, but a few conversations. Uh, all of the characteristics that have been mentioned came out. Um, but what I wanted to say was uh, one <coughs> conversation in uh, the health center, sort of pushing him about his family, and he showed me or gave me, we found on YouTube, this video of Morgan <laughs> playing slave eye. <laughs> there were five different women playing five different sizes of trumpets. <laughs> uh, they all turned out to be her. <laughs> and, uh, but he was obviously very proud of that, but he wasn't really bragging right, or pushing it. I had to ask. <laughs> anyway, I've got it on my phone, so in the uh, coffee hour, if anyone wants to hear it, I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than it's more than does in my hand. Anybody else? said about um, you don't remember everything people say but you remember how they make you feel 
And um, Mr. Lover always, always made me feel like a million dollars. He was so kind, and um, I can remember him saying that, that smile is what I remember. <laughs> to me, it would just turn on a miracle. He, when he would really smile, and I loved it. And he would always say to me, like, I, I remember him showing me their garage, because I, I was so, you know, like, loved their garage, and I loved their basement. And it was like all his tools and stuff, because I didn't have the head in my phone. <laughs> And um, he would always say, Rainy, you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. uh, Rainy, you can do anything you want. And I, I think how that made me feel, you know. So I always remember him for things like that. So thank you. Jerry, turn around. Uh, and dry. I, I knew uh, him. In bridge, and I was in the gist of the Gentlemen, in fact, the sterling gentleman is the expression I would use for the best. And he would do the same part. What do you think? I like that expression, sterling gentleman. I'll have to remember that one. That's great. Anybody else? Introduce. Hi, I just have a quick story. My name is Amanda. I am um, Grandpa's uh, granddaughter-in-law recently. But this is Austin, his great grandson. And we only got a little bit of time with him, but it was pretty valued time. And the funny story I have is when we came for brunch, we wanted to tell the family that we were having a baby uh, a little unexpectedly. So <laughs> to share the, with the family together, uh, it was a little hard because I was very nervous. But we came and I couldn't get the words out to tell everyone and it was hard. But uh, gra Grandpa said, does, does nobody understands they're having a baby. <laughs> 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 so uh, I didn't get the words out, and my, my sweet mother-in-law wasn't grasping it either. But <laughs> everyone in the room, Grandpa understood and caught on that we were having a baby. So we got to share the news for everyone. So thank you. Wonderful. Anybody else? Let's sing uh, Amazing Grace now. It's a song that we talk about having us sing here, and it's um, a beautiful old hymn. It's got, let's see, how many verses do we have today? Five? Four. Four, Four verses. Okay, because I'll play the keyboard, and we'll sing it together, and it just reminds us that God's grace is there every day of our life until he takes us home, and then it's there for us for all eternity. Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the song. And I think most of you know it by heart, but you have the words there if you'd like to read them. <laughs> Thank you. 
this time we're going to listen to the taps played that, and Morgan's going to play them for us. Let's bow our heads and listen. service too and uh, there are sheets like this that are on the back table there and uh, uh, you can take these to see where it is. It's in Elgin, the cemetery that explains how to get there here. So if you're going to go then you can take one of those. Uh, just to let you know too there are refreshments and they'll be across the way and then it's the second door down. It's our club room. It has a pool table in there and it has lots of chairs and we're going to have cookies and coffee and lemonade together. The family would love to have you come there and uh, talk to you, and also um, you can greet them there. There will be a guest book there, and you can fill that in if you would please. It'll be on the table that's just around the corner as you go into that room. By the way, the restroom is the women's. is just down a couple doors this way, and the men's is across the way, just a couple doors down. So there's restrooms right here. If you're going to the cemetery, we're planning to meet there at 1245, and so you should leave at 12 o'clock. We're not going in procession, but we're going to go uh, for the burial at 12.45. So um, I would like to ask the family to come forward now. If uh, Alice and Dave, if you'll be here with your spouses and then the rest of the immediate family. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to come to the front. And you can come this way. They'll be here past the pictures there. And if you'll just come from the front to the back, you can come this way, go past and look at the pictures and then greet them and also uh, express your condolences to them. So this concludes our service. Um, let's uh, spend a time, time in fellowship afterwards across the way. Thank you all for coming. And so those in the second row, if you'll come forward now and just greet them as you go to the room across the way for refreshments. Thank you.
your grace and your peace and your comfort as only you can do as the Almighty and the Everlasting God. And now hear us as together we unite our hearts and our voices in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us. It's a great honor to be here. Veterans and service members are invited to render a final salute during TAPS. If you're able to do so comfortably, please rise for military honors. Ma'am, please play TAPS.
food to middle service for Kendo Blow Bauer. I'd just like to take this moment to say thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Jerry, for your prayers and your assurances of our Lord's promises. Thank you to the United States Naval uh, Honor Guard for rendering honor to their, their departed brother in arms. Thank you for your flawless rendition of taps. And thank all of you for joining together today as Kenneth is laid to rest in his final resting place. So you may spend time in fellowship together this afternoon. We're invited to join together at Moretti's Restaurant for Memorial Luncheon, which is held just down the street. And once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh you. -huh.